Hey, Chase with EOTech, and today we're talking about zeroing your holographic weapon sight. So, what zero is best for you? Ultimately, guys, it kind of depends on a ton of factors, and you have to make that decision. But that feels like a cop-out and doesn't give you any good information. So, what we're going to try to do today is give you some of that technical information and hopefully help you make a better decision. So, what do we have here? We have a Dano Defense rifle. It is 16-inch barrel. We're shooting 55-grain M193 ball, and we're going to decide on a zero. Now, I'm gonna do a 25 yard zero because based on my ballistic calculations, which I did on shooterscalculator.com, which is a great free tool, you should check it out. That's gonna give me a pretty good overall spread for my zero and the kind of shooting that I'm gonna do. Now, why did I choose a 25 yard zero? Well, I'm interested, generally speaking, in zero to 300 yards. And based on the calculations that I did, that's gonna give me about a 12.8-ish spread above and below my point of aim for a total spread out to 300 yards from zero to 300. Now that's gonna change based on your atmospherics, your barrel length, your bullet weight, all that kind of stuff. So this is just rough approximated math for you guys to give you a point of reference. At the end of the day, I'm going to encourage you to please go do your own calculations so that you can really get it dialed in. But if we start here with the HWS, this is a EXVS 3-0. We're calculating, it's about a two and a half inch uh, height over bore. And so it's a little bit lower than what you're gonna get on the risers that most people are running these days, but some guys are still just throwing these directly on the receiver like we have here. And we're gonna hit about 10.42 inches at max ordnance, and that is coming in right about 245 yards. And then obviously at the muzzle, we're gonna be right at about two and a half inches height over bore. All right, and we're gonna go down as low as about a little, a little bit less than negative three inches um, in between there, right? So that's where we're getting that, that total spread rounded up to 13 inches total, right? Point of aim above and below between zero and 300 yards. And that's not too bad. Generally speaking, if you're thinking about uh, an animal, you know, this is again, this is 5.56, so small to medium game, or human, a 13 inch spread's not too bad vertically when you're talking about just putting dot on target and pressing trigger until you get the desired effects. So that's why we went 25 yard zero. Again, you choose your zero, do your calculations, and you're gonna get your spread. So that's the sort of thinking behind what we're doing here today, but let's get into the fun part which is the shooting. Now keep in mind, while we're sighting in at 25, other common zeros are 50, 100, and then there's 36 and 300 yard zero that Marine Corps uses. I use that for years, I'm still a big fan of it. And honestly, when you get into the math of this, typically with a 16 inch barrel and 55 grain, you're gonna find that like a 45 to 56 yard zero really gives you the smallest total deviation in your zero. But again, range considerations and just producing the video for you guys today, we decided to go with a very standard 25 yard zero because that's what most people use because most people are gonna have access to at least an indoor range where they can shoot and get that 25 yards. Most common zero, most common round, that's what we're going with today. So keep in mind, if you wanna dig into the nuts and bolts of the math yourself, check out the resources we've linked below and that'll really get you dialed in. Going hot. So I've got my lucky penny here because they don't pay me enough to have a quarter. And I'm just going to adjust this a little bit left. We're just shooting on steel to get sort of dialed in approximately first before we move the paper. We're not even on steel right now at 25. So I'm making some pretty gross adjustments just to get us on steel. There we go. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we are now generally on steel. And so we're gonna to move to the paper and actually print a three round group. We are about six inches left, five or six inches low. Now these are half MOA clicks at 100. So at 25, that's an eighth MOA. So I'm going to go uh, about 12. I know technically it should be 24, but I'm gonna do about 12 each direction just to see where that gets me. All right. And we're gonna go up. Okay. And let's see where we are. Let's check it. 
All right, so we were, it looks like we were pretty correct. And uh, even though I cut that measurement in half, I needed to probably do the full adjustment. So now we're gonna go right another five or six clicks. Five, we're gonna go up. One, two, three, four, five. Safety first, let's see where we are. I shot an extra round because I definitely know I threw one to the right. So keep yourself honest. All right, guys, so like I said, threw one right, I called that one, and then here's my, my three-round group. That was probably me as well. I may need to turn the dot down in brightness just a little bit. Good thing to keep in mind, having a maximally refined aiming point is always super useful for zeroing. So now we're gonna go up and print a confirmation group on the head. All right, so I turned my dot down a little bit to get that more refined aiming point. Let's go ahead and shoot this group. All right, let's check it. All right, so you guys can see here, Oh, just a little bit low where the center of that group is about half an inch uh, to three quarters of an inch below the uh, intended point of aim. So I'm going to make uh, probably come up about four and then we're going to walk this back to 100 and confirm it. So we made that final adjustment and now we are back at 100 and we're just going to shoot two confirmation groups, five rounds each on the left and right circles on that target to see how it's printing and show you guys the difference with a center hold at 25, which is our zero, and how that print, that group printing is gonna change based on range. All right, so what do we expect to see when we get down there? Well, at 25, we should obviously be point of aim, point of impact. At 100, we're gonna be a little high, and then obviously as the round hits max ord, it's gonna to top out like we said somewhere around that 10 inch above our point of aim mark. Again, ballistics dependent. And, uh, and then it's gonna start dropping down again. So uh, let's go see what we got on target and learn some things. All right guys, so here are our two five round groups. And as you can see, again, based on what the ballistics are supposed to be, I should be about five and a half to six and a half inches high, uh, not taking into account shooter input. Always you know, blame the shooter first. And we can see that that's right there. So I was actually holding bottom of the circle, you know, thinking that I'm, I'm gonna be a little, I need to aim a little low in order to get my point of impact. Um, and so there you go. So you can see it's right about six and a half, no, sorry, more about six, five and a half to six inches high right there with a five round group. Um, this is actually right about an MOA group and that's probably right about two inches there. So not a bad spread, rifle did pretty well, ammo is very consistent. And there you go. So you can tell that from a 25 yard point of aim, point of impact, you're gonna be, again, right about that, you know, five to six inches high at 100. And then that's gonna hit max ordinance about 240-ish uh, meters at about 10 and a half inches or so. Again, everything kind of varies. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're, you know, when you're shooting longer ranges and that's gonna start coming back down again. So there you go, guys, that's grouped at 25 and then grouped at 100. And you just demonstrating that, that difference in, uh, and where the round lands with that zero. So hopefully that was helpful guys. That is zeroing your HWS. A uh, couple of quick things to keep in mind. When you're making your adjustments, you are not moving the reticle the same direction that the round is going. It's actually opposite, right? And that's why we have the writing on there, up, down, left, right. All right, so here you can see right and down. And that is talking about the strike of the round, where you're going to move the round that strikes on target. Really easy way to think about this. You got a front side post, you got a rear side aperture. If I want the rifle barrel and therefore the strike of the round to go right, I have to move the sight, right, left, because that means I'll swing the butt of the rifle around to the right. So it's just opposite. Doesn't matter, well, not necessarily. If you just read the directions on the side of the optic, that is telling you, hey, I, want, I need the round to go up, great. I read down here, so I go the opposite direction of down, which is up. We try to keep it pretty simple. But just wanna let you guys know, the reticle is actually moving the opposite direction you want the strike of the round to grow. Ultimately, end of the day, read the directions, read the operator manual, make sure you have a good refined point of aim, make sure you have a good stable platform. If you wanna get into the math a little bit, use a nice free ballistic calculator. We'll have all that linked below. Hopefully this helped, hopefully this made sense. If you got any comments, questions, you wanna tell me everything I did wrong, I love reading it down below. So get in the comments and talk to me about it. Thank you so much for watching, train hard, live free. See you next time. 
All right, so what zero should you use for your holographic weapon sight? Well, honestly, it's gonna depend on you. So thanks so much for watching, see you next time.